there is a mother, there is a bedroom, there is a child in the bedroom, and uh, one day the child disappears. And the mother is looking for the child, which is a very simple and stupid example, but that's an example. But that's an idea. That's an idea. That's a situation, I would say, an idea of a situation. So what can I do with that? Is it, it's very, very cliche. So is it good? I don't know. What kind of attitude do I have to, to generate, to, to make it... I don't know what I want to do, a short film, uh, a feature film. Uh, the format is important, of course. So this kind of... I give an idea of a situation, but it can also be a character. It can be an image. It can be a sound. It can be a scene. It can be starting point for a story, starting point for developing things in time, actually. It's a seed which is then <coughs> later developed. Ideas are a little bit like a pyramid. I mean, one idea generates one, one other idea, which generates one other idea. For example, for a situation which could be a main idea, you can have afterward the characters, how they are together, how has the color of a character, how he acts, and each idea generates one other idea. If, if what we talk about here is the field of ideas that could become interesting, mm -hmm. most of the time we all agree with the fact that you start to, to be in an interesting field when you have two ideas uh, put together, uh, combined, that come from very heterogeneous origins. And it can be a paradox too. For example, sometimes it's in the title of the movie. If you take a movie like My Best Enemy, which is the story of a friendship between a, a woman and the, the, the new wife of her ex-husband, I don't know if it's clear, it's uh, with uh, Susan Sarandon and uh, I think Julia Roberts. And um, the idea is that your best friend can be your enemy. And to me, this is an idea because this is fertile. It's like electricity. If you have two poles, one negative, one positive, and you've got distance between both of them, you've, there's something to be built because how come, it's weird, how come your enemy can become your best friend? And um, um, an idea needs, for me, two ideas and a, a connection, which means an analogy and a paradox. But of course, at the same time, we like, you know, you don't want to also limit yourself to thinking that it has to be built on these contrasts. Because I was just thinking of the film Marriage Story, which I went to see the other day, which I was, you know, two and a half, two hours and 45 minutes of just a couple getting divorced, <clears throat> super moving, like super touching in the end. I really didn't, but it's just nothing. There's absolutely no idea, you know, there really, it's just this couple getting divorced, hours and hours of dialogue, and you know, somehow good. it works. No, it was good. I thought it was good. I don't know what other people thought, but. But it means that in that case, the idea was more in the specificity of, of the, course. Yeah, the, yeah. the humanity exactly, of these two beings. Right? But the, that's the, why the I guess it's sometimes it's dangerous also to define that I like, you know, to cut your legs off yeah. before you, exp you know, I think, you know, sometimes it's because you have contrast or sometimes there's like a concept or sometimes like, but sometimes it's such a like deep emotion, like this guy really had something to say about the fragility of relationships and that's, it's a you desire know, then. And it exactly. And it but at the same time, itself. you said the idea. It's the fertility of re relationship. Yeah. So it's the theme sometimes. Yeah. It's the theme that yeah. you want to explore in a way that's new. No. And the, the newness element to me is key. No. So, uh, an idea has to be new, else it's already seen, especially in the script writing field. Everybody knows, everybody's got many references, everybody's watching a lot of fiction. So uh, an idea nowadays, it's got to be new, a new combination. Well, no idea could be an idea too. Yeah, and but no idea. Uh, I don't know what that means, no idea. If you have two hours and 40 minutes with no idea, if you start digging, you understand what is the idea uh, under, under it. Maybe it's, uh, the idea is the relationship between what you write and the, and the world outside. Uh, it, it can sound boring, but it's your choice to, to choose a slow pace, for example. If you think that the world is too fast, then you choose to make a slow movie. So. There are t there's an idea, there's a choice. And also, may maybe very pra pragmatically, an idea is something that makes you write, that mm -hmm. you, you are intrigued, and there is a joy attached 
to the fact that you have an idea. Because what is important, I think, for someone who's creative is, I receive this idea. I don't know why I have it. I'm under the shower, I'm, I'm, I'm biking, I'm doing something, and then I think something arrives. And then I feel joy, a certain kind of joy. And I want to write about it, but I don't know if it's a good idea. Yeah, I think the, the fact that one idea must generate one other idea, it's exactly that. And when maybe Natalie said that uh, there was a film with no ideas, maybe she wants, I don't know Natalie, but maybe she wants to say that there are no so plot ideas in a way, but there are ide ideas inside which are developed in a more, in a less visual way in terms of topics, but in a more maybe deep way in terms of problematics, in t I mean, in the intimate problematics of people, which means a lot of ideas, but maybe developed in another way than the classical topics of drama, I think so. Yeah, no, th that, yeah, that's what I think, I guess it's just obviously, it's just having some caution, I suppose, when you're trying to define, you know, what makes an idea, because mm -hmm. if it's a tool that's supposed to help writers, then you don't want writers to think, oh, like, maybe I want to explore this feeling, but that's boring, or we've seen it, you know, maybe there's, there's a great film there, even if it's, like, a stupid premise, like, the mother, the, 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 the child disappears, you know, maybe there's, like, a master, an existential masterpiece in that film, you know, but, like, mm -hmm. I guess it's just tricky for, you know, where do you, you know, where do you push yourself and where, like, when do you tell yourself it's not worth exploring? You know, that's a huge question, I think, for writers and it's uh, difficult. When, when we do these pre-writing workshops, uh, we, f f we see uh, the huge gap that there is between something and an idea that runs. You know, it's, it's interesting because you have, uh, ideas that immediately you put them together, it creates uh, the opening of a field, you know, and some ideas stay with themselves, you know, they stay small in a way. And so what, what is interesting is to, to hunt for ideas that will, because writing a film is, a, if we talk about a feature film, for instance, or a TV series, it's such a long process that nobody wants to feel stuck into something that feels too small in a way. Maybe the word Alexis used is better, insight. Uh, insight, you understand it's new. It's a new way to look at something everybody thinks he knows. So it doesn't have to be a new field. It's a new way to look at something. A new combination. He was also That's talking about problem, you know, some, uh, uh, something that seems to be you know, a, a problematic in itself is, is, is the opening of a, of a research. So it has to put you in a, in a situation of, of being the researcher in that field that And solving defined. a problem, as Alex said. For example, the problem of the movie I just heard about, I haven't seen it, it's, it sounds boring. So how do you solve that problem? For example, if you uh, write an uh, epic, like um, Lord of the Rings, so the problem as a writer is that you have many places and it keeps changing. So it can become episodic and boring because it's, everything is new, but always uh, with the, the same way to be new. So one way to solve the problem when you talk with the uh, script doctors is to use the family drama, which means that on this trip, on this journey, you take along a family. So the family is taking Frodo with Aragorn. With, you take the same people, so something doesn't change and something changes. And this is a way to solve the problem. So this is an idea uh, when you have a problem to solve. Sure. Also, one of the things that we are facing in our job of helping people writing and rewriting the script is the fact that sometimes they repeat all during years sometimes they do a lot of workshop around the world sometimes being convinced that this, this first point of view they have on their story or this idea if we can call it that way they have about the story is the good one and they don't see that maybe if they look at it in another way, maybe there is something new, there is something really rich in it. So, so I, I'm very uh, curious about what do you think about the fact that sometimes you're, you're, you're locked into, maybe it's too soon to talk about that, but maybe it's part also of the thing that we, ideas are very seducing, you are very good ideas, you have a joy and then how do you, keep being flexible. 
for creativity, it's uh, we need something new, something original. Uh, regarding the, the the question of problems, um, there, I, I think uh, we can see uh, script writing uh, as a problem solving. But there are three ways, in my opinion, uh, of addressing problems. Uh, there are problems that are given to you. It could be the teacher that gives you, you know, uh, equation or a problem to solve. She knows the answer, uh, the way to solve it. So this problem has an answer and someone knows uh, the answer or knows what, uh, what will be the, 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 the outcome. And this is typically, if we look at script writing, it's like, you know, you have a director or producer coming with a, a book uh, and asking you to adapt the book uh, to, uh, to, to make it a film. Or, uh, uh, the, the second type of, of problem is uh, the problem that you find yourself. Uh, so something is wrong, something is missing, something is intriguing. Uh, so you, you start looking for, uh, uh, and this may be uh, close to the idea or concept uh, you, you, you may have. Because something is contradictory or there is something. And in science we have uh, uh, this kind of problems. So we are intrigued, we, are, you know, we, we would like to, to, to go further to solve the problem. And the third uh, uh, type of, uh, of uh, problem solving, uh, it's the one that is, uh, I think, uh, uh, very, very uh, difficult, is when you create your own problem. It's not you are not finding something because it's messy or something is wrong and you want to, to address the issue. It's you are creating this problem. And the fact that you create this problem is like, you know, you are uh, riding a bike, you see a woman uh, crying, and this, uh, this uh, situation uh, will intrigue you. And you just, you just, okay, let's test this. What are the, the problem of this woman? So you, you will be starting to create a, new, a problem that you want to solve uh, and to write uh, about it. So, I think it's it's good to 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 address the fact that if you are scriptwriter and someone come with something, with uh, for example a director had a book or had an idea, something that and he doesn't know how to write it or how, how to start it, so he came with an idea, and this is the beginning. So it's not your idea, but you have to write it. So how do you do? So this is one, one type of problem and should be addressed in terms of the creative processes are uh, different. But if it's your own creation, you create the problem, how do you deal with this then? How do you, uh, if it's someone who gave you the problem, it's different from when you, you create the problem yourself. Because if, uh, for example, I am a director and ask you to write for, for, for me for, because I have a concept, or, uh, you will start asking me questions. Why? Why are you interested by this subject? What, uh, what, what story you, you, you want to, to say? What, but if it's your own problem, so maybe someone needs to ask you these questions. And this is what is interesting about your workshop. So uh, the fact that there are a lot of people around the table and they are uh, question, questioning your idea or concept. That I think it's, uh, it's a different way to... Or a script consultant also does the yes. same thing. Yes, yeah. For me, uh, with my practice of hypnosis, um, uh, an, I an idea can be anything. It's very important to be uh, totally open to, to that. And finding an idea is not the main point. Uh, the main point is what you can or cannot do with this idea. You can or cannot make with this idea is the main point. Uh, so, uh, an example, this glass of water. I like it because the lights in the water uh, I enjoy. So, uh, if I focus on this, uh, I think I can have a lot of idea uh, and uh, maybe good or uh, creative or not creative, but uh, I don't know. It's uh, not my opinion who is uh, uh, important. Uh, it's in the import, uh, opinions of others. <laughs> Uh, the person uh, I address. Uh, and uh, so uh, I can be totally free 
uh, and receptive to all my ideas. And the selection it will be later. I, I, I must not care about that. I think it's very important in my work, in my work. Uh, uh, the process uh, are associative processes uh, then later. Uh, but the beginning point can be anything. Uh, it's very important. Uh, we name that utilization in hypnosis. Can I utili utilize this glass of water of uh, uh, is boring for me or for the person? Uh, and uh, pleasure is very important, or joy, mm -hmm. maybe, but pleasure is. So, would you say it's a pragmatic approach? Like, I do it, what, what's, what gives me joy and what makes, makes me. Excite productive. Excitation, yes. Productive. Uh, I, 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 I must have excitement. Excitement, sorry. Yes, yes. excitement. Okay. So the, I think the excitement, the, the notion of excitement and uh, enjoyment are very important because this is what uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, the creativity field, it's the motivation to do the work. It does, it, if you have the skills, uh, you have the expertise, uh, or the knowledge, the skills to write, but if you, don't, if you are not motivated to explore the idea, it's uh, different. So what motivates you is uh, this uh, uh, joy or desire. Uh, and uh, in, in the work we have done with, uh, with the script writers, uh, in the first uh, step of the creative process, they all talk about pleasure, desire and uh, the painful uh, uh, aspects are more in the, the later stages but the beginning is, is just you know pleasure mm -hmm. uh, dreaming uh, uh, you, you know it's it, you and I think it's very very important mm -hmm. to distinguish between uh, the original idea of a script mm -hmm. uh, that you will maybe explore decide to continue or uh, just uh, uh, drop it. Uh, and the, the ideas that came when you start the writing, there are two different types of ideas and two different pr uh, processes. Uh, so maybe. Is also, do you think also uh, the fact that an idea comes from you makes it more difficult to uh, tackle for subconscious reasons because you're never sure yourself are uh, the right source uh, to establish what is a good idea. Whereas when somebody tells you, write about that because I'm very interested with this, it gives you a source that seem reliable for other humans. It, does it make a difference? I think it's, it makes a difference when it's your own idea. Uh, because there is some sort of, uh, we were talking about it yesterday, uh, there is some sort of uh, attachment to this idea. And uh, anyone who uh, may criticize it or, uh, uh, you, you know, you may feel like uh, personally attacked, uh, or, but you need this openness to, uh, you, you need to, 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 to open it to others, to question this idea, to push you further. In, in, uh, and uh, I think this is very important aspect in this type of workshop when you have a lot of uh, script writers and they are questioning ideas. And this, when you look at the history of creativity in any field, uh, scientists or uh, writers used to meet on a regular basis and discuss their, uh, their work. Uh, and this helped them, you know, to have ideas go back, work on a solo, and then come back, share ideas. This is how, how it, it should be. But in script writing, if it's your own idea, uh, the, the good thing to start with is not to, to say, how will I develop the script? Is why I want. So the why is something very important, to understand why you want to tell this story. And this needs to take a lot of time uh, in, in the whole process, because you know, this is in science or in, uh, in uh, literature, the why is very important. And when you ask question with why, uh, it leads, uh, yeah, th th this is not my opinion, it's uh, really uh, based on uh, research, it leads to abstract thinking. Uh, and in general, it leads also to pro procrastination. 
because uh, you are in abstract thinking. It's not you are not doing the the film uh, right now. Or so when you say when you ask yourself why you want to tell the story, that leads to abstract thinking and, uh, and procrastination. Yes. yes. So that's lead to uh, abstract thinking uh, and leads to uh, procrastination. And also, you know. Uh, um, the thing is, uh, when you look at uh, uh, um, the, the first step of the process is you, you have this idea, you want to explore it, so you start collecting information. So this is the preparation phase where you test the idea by uh, exposing it to more information from others. Uh, from, so you cannot start writing immediately. So some, uh, yeah, uh, but you get stuck because you know something is lacking. It's not that you don't have the skills to write, but the mean or the why you are writing is lacking. Uh, yeah, the, the question of why, for me, I mean, as a writer, is a, a, a quite complex question. Because often we arrive to understand why we have made this film after the making the film. <laughs> really afterward, they really, really, I mean, the true reason why, the true reason why you make this film or you choose this subject often arrives at the end. When, when you see the film like if it's not yours. I mean, in, in a kind of detachment, it appears and you understand why. <laughs> It happens to me twice. I mean, it's not. But this doesn't mean that you don't need the uh, uh, a why, a why of some exactly. kind. Exactly. So the, the process. exactly. So the why is a quite complex, uh, I mean, question. So you can ask uh, why this subject, if you really are in a quite empty space. But if ideas comes to you, maybe you don't need at this stage why. Maybe you don't need more how. It's, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, so it's not really the reason, the rational reason why you chose this subject, but how you gonna to explore this subject, maybe give you more answers. And maybe at the end you find this big why, this, uh, this work. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's, that doesn't mean that there is one way or the other. No, no, I think just absolutely. that the question is complex of the one. So maybe uh, you... Uh, because if it's uh, a problem you create, or uh, you know, it's the, the, the third type of uh, problem, if it's uh, your own idea, uh, so the why maybe is not that important, because you know, it's something like intuitive, you know, this is something you want to talk about it, but if someone asks you to write for, 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 uh, around the concept, uh, maybe the, the, the why is very, very important. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's interesting what you're saying about I mean this question of like if it's your idea or if it's not then and the effects that that has because I think when you're working with some idea that's given to you in a way you're much more free as a writer I find personally like I don't care so much about like I'm serving the story so much more you know because I'm free to kind of go with something that feels right even though I don't particularly believe in it but then I think like and having kind of worked on one film which was an idea that I took from someone else and I found it was much easier in a way to kind of rewrite it because I, I could see those flaws instantly. Of the, but then this question of the why was so much more painful and it kind of pursued me throughout the whole making of the film because I was like, is this really like, is this really in me or did I just find like a fraction that fits with me, you know? And this, and this is very difficult, you know? Well, with the other film, which was so much more laborious in terms of like, you know, in a way like writing it and da, da, da. But then like, there's no doubt at some point that this is like a hundred percent something. And so it, it's, it's, it's tricky because of course, like you want to be free when you write, but you also need like, want to know that in the end it really means something to you. And I guess that's kind of like the question of, of sort of freedom versus sort of having the why, you know, and having that why. And in particular in the, the film industry, it's not like you are writing a fiction book. Uh, mm -hmm. So, because you know, you are preparing something for a, for an audience and uh, for someone maybe to, to develop it in, in film. So this question of why, for example, the, 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 the example you, you quoted in the beginning about this uh, divorce uh, dialogue mm -hmm. uh, and, and talking, uh, it could be boring. Uh, you can, you know, if someone describes it as oh, nearly three hours of uh, dialogue about divorces, but 
if there is something, the, the why exactly. has been really explored, where we are going with this story, what, what, what message we are sending. That's, I think, very important. Maybe the why needs a why not. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you want to create something new at the end, yeah. you understand why. And, but if you've got the why immediately, you don't need to write. It's not immediate. Do I don't think it's uh, something very easy to, to understand. If you really know why, you stop. You don't, you stop, yeah. yeah. Antoine, you said that the, fir the f first phase of your uh, uh, pre-writing uh, workshop is uh, fluidity, is a uh, lot of ideas. So uh, th this is typically what, uh, what is, it's linked to brainstorming. And the, the main uh, uh, rule is uh, to avoid criticizing ideas. And uh, so uh, the, uh, why not? It's really useful. So everything needs to come and we accept everything. We are not questioning uh, uh, the ideas. So the phase one is really divergent thinking and needs some type of pro processes, cognitive processes, uh, where you have to inhibit this uh, controlling uh, center of the brain that is, you know, it's uh, make censorship uh, about uh, the idea. Uh, you, you make, uh, uh, you know, uh, moral uh, judgment or... Uh, so you need really to inhibit this uh, control uh, processes and leave uh, the uh, the creative uh, processes, the one that that uh, uh, lead to uh, generative ideas. So the why not is very important uh, at this f uh, first uh, first phase. Everything we have to like in brainstorming, uh, all ideas are uh, are welcome, with no judgment at all. You have mentioned uh, this idea that sometimes you you have an idea when you take a shower. Uh, and in, in different fields, in painting, writing, also science, many people will say that good ideas are in some way impersonal. They don't really come neither from someone else, neither from yourself. It comes, so that could also be uh, the, 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 this, uh, this concept of, of saying that a good idea is, is something I can, I don't know how, I connect myself to something, that brings me, for example, in science, a solution or a new insight into, into a problem. It's a third way of just ideas coming from myself, from someone else. I think it's a th another way of seeing how ideas... Somewhere. Are, coming somewhere, from somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. somewhere yeah. Okay. Interesting. I think the main point is not the ID, it's the way you explore the ID. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, also uh, there is a, a second point, very important, I think, it's uh, the paradoxical pa paradox if you if i say to me i must find an idea is the west is the best way to um, uh, impeach me to to find the idea so uh, in taoism uh, there there is an idea so uh, it's important to be without idea uh, for fertile thinking and uh, uh, about uh, also vacuity uh, in the oriental thinking. Uh, emptiness in a way. Emptiness, yeah. yes. And uh, last point, um, Henri Poincaré, the famous uh, uh, mathematician, uh, in 1924 uh, 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 made a lecture about uh, an, an event he, he, in his life. He, he was searching for uh, resolution of problem. Fusion functions, fusion theory. Okay. Function fusion. You know that, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a very famous anecdote. Okay, so, and uh, it was very famous uh, for creativity, uh, this lecture, because uh, he found the solution when he decided to escape, to uh, take a car and go in the country to uh, just uh, take breath and Air, fresh air. But well, he explains very precisely yes. that he was okay. been working a lot, lot of time during months about a problem on fusion functions. And then he had planned a travel with some friends. And at the moment, he was not thinking about the problem. At the moment, he, he put it at the right, the, uh, the right foot on the first step of the bus. The solution came to him. And he says it was so clear so neat that I did not have to think about it for the rest of the day. I had my walk, and I went back home, and then I wrote the solution.
Um, if I, I may uh, add, uh, I, I love this uh, story about you know uh, this uh, type of uh, uh, emergence of of the insights because this is typically uh, an insight. Uh, it's uh, I'm just you know trying to 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 look at. Um, uh, it's uh, I, I think it's in phase four where we can talk about uh, the insights. I have some insight about, about it. Uh, where, uh, why we, uh, after what um, uh, you said, uh, is after a long period of work. So this is very important. You cannot have insights uh, in in 90% 90 of the cases, you can't have insight without having worked and struggled and uh, reached uh, uh, impasses. And uh, yeah, it, you need this huge amount of work. And this, this is what, uh, and when you take a break, if you are stuck with a problem, it means that something is wrong and you cannot shift your mental mother. And this break, you, you have, for example, during the trip uh, for uh, Poincaré, uh, this break, uh, there are theories to explain what, what happened, but we can discuss it later. Mm. But it's really, when we are stuck, and it's in phase four, the blocks, and how we can deal with the, the blocks, it's very important to, to move to something else. And, uh, and if you have, for example, as uh, uh, script writers, you have maybe many projects at different stages, so the fact that you move from one project to another one helps you find solution to, to the other one. It's exactly the same uh, process. If you don't mind, I would like us to uh, go back, because here we are about you know, uh, how you can be blocked in the middle of a, of a process of writing, which means it can be quite late in the process, right? Mm -hmm. But here I would like to start with really clarifying uh, the field of possibilities in idea generation, you know, How which to is the, very, the, the, the initiation of a, the stimuli, you know, the stimulus. Are you looking for techniques? Yeah, mm, yeah <laughs> among others. Yeah, yes, so yes. How to stimulate? It might be connected to what you have been saying, because I mean, how to produce new ideas. I do believe that you have to uh, create some kind of disequilibrium, some kind of ambiguities some kind, to employ more philosophical terms, some kind of dialectical balances. What does that mean? Well, it means uh, if you, again, if you have a problem, and if you just look at the problem the way it is, it will be difficult to have a new insight to the problem. But you, if you try to invent uh, uh, stratagems, stra strategies, mm -hmm. strategies to unlock the way you have been seeing the problems, it will put the problem in a more dynamical perspective. And the, dynamic, the, the thing is that you cannot have idea if you're in front of statical problems. You need to find a dynamics uh, uh, to, get, to have a new insight. So what I meant about those kind of dialect, dialectical uh, balances, it's a way to put things into dynamics in a way that you don't see them exactly the way you used to be seeing them, and maybe a new insight will come. So, so but is this more if you're blocked, would you say, or to generate the no, idea in, initially? No, I would say it in general, in general. Of course, maybe it's because I'm blocked because you consider that you're facing a problem, but even though, I mean, invent for yourself strategies to put dynamics mm -hmm. and ambiguities in the field you're working in. Mm -hmm. And in, uh, in the room uh, of the conference of Henri Poincaré, there was another mathematician, Jacques Adamar, who, who named the four phase, phases for creativity. And uh, we still use uh, this uh, notion in hypnosis. So the, the first time is, uh, is named incubation. You, you are uh, in contact with the problem or what uh, your pre the preoccupation, so, but you don't know, uh, you don't do anything it's uh, very important to not doing anything uh, and, or, or you do uh, other, other things. <laughs> and then uh, the second phase is, uh, and, uh, is called, in French it's very uh, problematic, but uh, enlightenment. Uh, the, it's like a light uh, of emergent creative idea. And uh, the uh, th th third phase is verification integration. You you check, you check if it's uh, 
a valuable or, or not valuable ID. And uh, four phases is uh, you, you, you quit the trance state because it's like a trance state. Um, we, we can uh, scientifically uh, consider, um, see that like a, a trance state. Yeah. Uh, sorry, when? When do you have this state? The trance state? In the four phases. So we, 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 at first, I, I am in contact with my glass of water mm -hmm. and then uh, arrive without any effort from me. Uh, it's like an, an ocean or a pound or a chemical product and uh, maybe other ideas, associative ideas arri are arriving and maybe one idea I find it so exciting arrive, mm -hmm. arrive sorry, like a light. And then I check, oh, no, it's a rubbish ID. Mm -hmm. uh, so I quit, I stop all that, and I do other things. So, and this moment, uh, we, can, we can see scientifically as a trend. The, the thing is, one question would be, a screenwriter, a professional screenwriter, he feels some pressure because his job is to have ideas and apply his ideas and have results with his skills. So my question is, how can you be open and, and you know, creative and, uh, with this kind of pressure? How can you find a balance between the pressure that you feel professionally and the fact or that you... Or give yourself uncomfortable constraints. Sometimes, you know, pressure can stimulate you. Sometimes pressure blocks you. Mm -hmm. So it, there is no rule on that. But I think that how to stimulate is really linked to the block. I mean, when you ask how to stimulate, it means that you begin from a block situation and you have to stimulate something. So I think the two is like two different poles of energy. One is plus, one is less, the less is block, the plus is stimulate. So the, the two are really very connected. Yeah. And I think they are connected through something which I call, I mean, we call, I mean, is recognized as resistance. There are some subjects in which you find some resistance on you, which you can explore, explore in a very creative way, or they can block you and that's all. It's not a subject for you, or it's not a good idea for you. But sometimes they stimulate you and you find solution, a very good idea. But, you have to explore these resistances. And sometimes uh, they are linked to this kind of censorship that someone spoke before, means that uh, you don't want to deal with that because there is some part on you, in very inner part of you that blocked you and you don't want to go to explore that. It's something dangerous, that you feel as dangerous. At what time can you predict that you're gonna have ideas? And is there a way to organize your, <coughs> your life so that you know that at 9 a.m., like today, well, approximately, uh, we knew that we had a rendezvous, an appointment with um, uh, finding solutions to problems. So is there a way to build something for your own, whatever you call it, deep ego, brain, whatever, uh, yourself, well, the person you are, uh, to organize it so that I, it's, uh, um, uh, welcoming uh, ideas. If your question is at what time you can predict your own creativity, uh, uh, I know it's very important to, to have a good knowledge of uh, ourselves. Uh, some people are more creative on the mornings, other in the night, and uh, uh, I think it's relatively uh, the same all the life. So it's self, self knowledge. Yes, self knowledge. But isn't yes. there a way to organize a bit more? Because I know that, for example, the writer Roald uh, Dahl, he had a place and he had habits. He had like uh, three pencils and uh, he would enter his place at nine sharp and then uh, have a glass of tea. And then um, he had a chair where he knew that he had better ideas than in other chairs. Mm -hmm. You know, something like that. Yes. We, maybe like you can ask Samira in the screenwriter that you interviewed. Uh, d did they have rituals, for example? Did they tell you that they had rituals or routines or such kind of routines that were very uh, important for them? 
Ye yes, and uh, I, I would start by uh, something that is, uh, uh, because it, this was really um, uh, uh, very interesting for me, uh, because you, we think about these writers as very creative and it's easy for them to write, uh, and in fact it's based on really hard work. And the, we can see differences between the writers that has been uh, taught how to write, uh, participate to workshops and uh, uh, attend schools for writing, not directing or filming or for writing, and the difference between the autodidacts ones, you know, uh, come from philosophy or, uh, or other uh, subjects. So those who have been trained on, in writing, they have routines, they sit for 10, 15 hours in front of the computer. Uh, it could be in a coffee shop, it could be in the office of the producer, it could be in their home, but mainly in, uh, in, in coffee shop. And even if they don't have any clue or idea about what they are, they have to sit. Sometimes after, you know, trying to write, ideas come. Sometimes nothing, but because they tried, they, they read, they uh, collect information, ideas come at, uh, at some point. That would be the opposite of, of, of what you were suggesting, which is uh, instead of uh, sitting and waiting, uh, creating unbalanced, creating new angles, creating, uh, you know, so. so and, 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 is it really a contradiction, actually, because is it there? might be complementary yeah. in some ways, of course, it might be complementary. Because it's Phases. very uncomfortable also to sit for 10 hours in a way, like that's also a very... Yes, yeah. and it's, it's, it's a limitation. It's a but I think what you say also about knowing yourself is, is, is really interesting because, in fact, at some point I realized I developed a habit because it was when I started working in production and then I wanted to write and the only time I could write was in the morning before going to work. But then it started becoming a question that I could only really write between like five and eight in the morning. And I couldn't understand. I thought it was just a habit because of, you know, it was always before. But actually it's because in this, if I wake up at five, I feel like everything else around me is shots, you know, like, and that I have this like special time, which nothing like anyways, no one is going to be right. Like all these like outside interferences are gone. But even more than like outside stimulus, it's like that I've carved this, like I've worked for this time. I don't know how to explain it. Like it's like nobody can take that away from me. Everything is black outside. And it's enough for me to write in those two hours, maybe even 10 page, and then I don't need to write anything else for the rest of the day. In fact, usually after 10 a.m. I can't write anything, in fact. And I think it's like, and I just, it took me like so much time to understand that this is my perfect time, but then you realize, oh, it's just knowing yourself, you know, and knowing like what works for you and like what kind of triggers some sort of... But the problem with that is that, of course, I understand this and I, that's why I was saying it's complementary, but if you know too much that, if you, you get into a routine, I suppose, and this idea I was talking about, for example, could it be an idea to give you uh, 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 constraints to break your usual way of being and, and living and writing. For example, you like to write from this time to this time with this kind of pencil in that kind of chair, which I could perfectly can understand, and change radically. I don't know, uh, some people practicing, for example, martial arts will say that you use very much your right hand, well, try to use your, your left one and see what happens. So you like to write in that place and you don't like to write in the other place, try to impose to yourself to write in this other place in very uncomfortable kind of situations to break the routine. And if I may, there's also a, a small uh, uh, nuance that I would like to, not a nuance, some, an important separation that I would like to uh, establish here because it, we've, we've learned from a, a study in uh, Cambridge study, the fact that uh, it doesn't create the same um, uh, dynamic inside you in terms of new connection uh, of, of synapses uh, when you are uh, fixed, body fixed or body in movement, for instance. But this doesn't mean that body in movement is better than body fixed in front of the computer. It means that body fixed in front of the computer is great when you want to uh, right. formulate when you were to put into words ideas. 
but once you want, when you want to create ideas, when, you want to, when you're looking for ideas, body in movement is a far better uh, uh, system. I agree that, with that. When I work with patients, ordinarily, they, uh, we, we, are, we sit together. But when there is a, uh, we block, uh, I, I propose stand up and we work uh, standing. Uh, and uh, uh, sometimes I, I work with uh, some uh, dancers and we work with dance. Uh, I, I can't dance, but I accompany <laughs> them and they work and they work very efficiently uh, with dance and movement. And uh, Francois Wouston, you, you would uh, insist on, on this. If you have no idea, make uh, movement. Uh, you can sit, but uh, you, you have to move your body. Uh, you, you just uh, talked about Francois Roustan, and um, I know that Alexis uh, knew him and uh, that Philippe uh, knew him too. I just know his books. But he tells also that um, in order to be creative, you have to be very still. You have to find the right position yes. and not move. But um, if you are blocked, he says that a very slight movement, so you don't have to dance if you are no dancer. Maybe you yes. just have to move your hand like that until you feel comfortable enough to let ideas come. So yes, uh, it depends on the uh, individuals, but if it, uh, you are you are right. Sometimes uh, movement is not like a, very a, slight a lot of movement, or yeah. you can just imagine a movement, mm. and it so you can do it sitting. Or lying. Yes. You can just sit, close your eyes, and imagine a movement. You mean you imagine yourself moving? Yes, you can also. Uh, and it, or, it, the, it is as efficient as moving in reality. One of the most useful uh, hypnotic techniques is you imagine you are in a cinema and you, s you see yourself on the screen and uh, you see the film. Uh, and uh, you enjoy the film with you on the screen. Okay. Are, you, are you saying that um, if you are writing, for example, you have characters and you are blocked, is imagining your characters moving a good way to find solutions? Yes, I usually use this technique in my work. Well, again, it's to find dynamics in some ways. Seems like, yeah. Theoretical or, or, or practical or, or body dynamics, but it's to find dynamics. I use it in my immersive writing, the, uh, this kind of technique. But I use it with um, closed eyes. I mean, I, I put, I spoke with uh, Samira last evening. What do you call then, immersive uh, writing? How do you do it? Yeah, I mean, it's, right, uh, it's, it's difficult to give this technique in five words, but anyway, it's the idea to, uh, to work on closed eyes, both me and the, and the author, which I, which, I wrote, which I work, and we put in a kind of uh, semi-consciousness. I mean, we, we put on the black, because if you stay open eyes, you are in a liner position, you see the reality, the table, the, everything, and that doesn't allow you to connect with the, your character and to see your character. So we go into this space uh, uh, of black space, and this black space immediately, um, of course I have an, a, a kind of guidance which I call a non-directive gui non gu guidance, meaning that I go through that space with him, with this character, in saying, for instance, uh, um, which sounds he hears. And through the sounds, it becomes happens things with this character. So you ask a perception question. Yeah, I ask. And he, he, he describes, I mean, is it with a, we have a, a data phone, and he describes what happens with sound. And it sounds, I mean, it takes a lot of things because the sounds are incredible rich. And it takes a lot of situation, a lot of things which happens. And afterward, maybe sometimes what happens, call me, for instance, uh, the touch. So I say, touch it. What happens if you touch it? And hope everything happens. Or what happens if you, how, this, how is the room? What, what's the smell in this room? So you, you know? use the five senses. The five senses. I go through the five senses, which this technique, and the, the, um, a lot of things happens, and the, the character 
Um, says who he is, says who he is, who he is, who, what likes, what, uh, what he prefers, what he, it disturbs him, you know, says a lot of things about him in this dimension. <coughs> and when we stop that and the uh, author came out of that, it's incredible, because he knows that he has seen everything, everything. I mean, I work on, on, on Gilbert Durand, or Henri Corbin or Jung works about the imaginal. And the imaginal is the sources of the images. And when you cannot touch the imaginal if you don't go in this semi-consciousness, because it's a place which is um, not the imaginary. The imaginary is outside, is the how you project images, but you stay on a, on a plan of reality and you have the imaginary, the imaginary. But the imaginary is inside you, it's in a place which is very inner and it contacts the sources of images. So you can explore it just if you go in a kind of, uh, yeah, semi-consciousness, you can say that. We say that creativity doesn't come from a void. It's really uh, based, uh, there is a knowledge base. So creative people are very open and they are like sponge, they are absorbing a lot of things all the time uh, and at some point something you know will trigger a memory and uh, the, uh, you have this idea and you want to, to explore it because it's linked to your knowledge. It doesn't, uh, it's, creativity is really really uh, based on knowledge and hard work and, uh, and you need like 10 years in the, in the field. To start, you uh, need to work a lot, yeah, a lot, yeah. lot, and uh, you know you have uh, I don't know for for you, but you you just you know you read something in uh, the newspaper, you put it aside, Atia. Yeah, this this could be interesting, and you have like a folder of ideas, and when you don't have any uh, requests uh, from a director, or oh, you, you look at your folder. So let's look at this idea. Which one I can uh, look at and explore. But maybe what she said, what she said, what Lisa said, is a, is a, it's a way to accelerate, to yes. the process. Yes. Um, and and uh, if having I, yeah. different kind of ideas, kind of ideas that you don't have if you just yes, select absolutely. papers and try to think consciously about, oh, why am I consciously interested into like self exploration? It's not really yeah. self exploration. It's being a spectator of your own imagination, in a way, something yeah. like that. It's to, yeah. it's to explore a space that we have inside, everyone has inside, but that we are not used to explore it because... There is some blockage. The, yeah, because it's not demanding from the reality. The reality doesn't demand you to go and explore this space. Uh, what you describe is uh, really uh, reflects the, the neuroscience of, mm. uh, of uh, creativity. Mm. It's really uh, uh, beautifully uh, said compared mm. to what we say in neuroscience. You can see some, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, objective measure of what you are saying in terms of this uh, imaginary, this word yeah. that uh, we can access, but sometimes, uh, you know, we are like blocked or we don't want to go in this uh, memory and uh, stuff, yeah. Well, I would like to also uh, come back to very practical things, maybe, uh, about how to generate and multiply and stimulate, you know, uh, coming from one assumption, and I would like you to, to maybe Tell us what you think about this, because maybe science has evolved in its uh, understanding. Uh, we've uh, read this uh, theory about the fact that uh, for uh, in neuroscience in the 19, uh, beginning of the uh, 1990s, they've been establishing the fact that the, the brain in itself, left alone, the human brain left alone in its own process, is testing very little numbers of hypotheses. Uh, meaning that when you're left inside your own uh, comfort zone, you just keep on, uh, uh, you know, believing that the little elements that you have are the right one and you have to keep them. Meaning that you just see what your brain generates. And if the, your brain is not opening up, you, you just believe that this is the only way. And which is the reason why... Uh, it seems 
possible in a very in there it seems interesting to test the all the ways that generate that break the isolation of the brain in a way that so is it from the inner process of your own opening on other fields that you can uh, uh, reach within yourself is it through confrontation with others uh, which is also something you suggest um, we've been very amazed to discover that um, the simple fact of having a group of people uh, uh, creating collisions of ideas, collisions of uh, characters, situations, uh, um, musical background, uh, you know, sociological background, whatever you can imagine that can help enrich the, the, the collisions, just voluntarily creating collisions of, uh, of parameters, of stimuli, is in itself generating a path and, and, and generating a profusion. Yeah, the, the, this notion of collision, I read it in uh, Arthur Kessler's book, Act of Creation, famous book, uh, and uh, for me it's very important. Uh, uh, two things will uh, habitually have nothing to do between them, common, yeah. and they collide, and uh, it, it it makes some crash, some uh, accident. Uh, it, it speaks a lot to me in my work uh, to, to create uh, in some uh, difficult contexts uh, um, healing effect uh, in my practice of medical doctor. Uh, collision, yes, uh, is very important uh, concept for me, uh, concept of collision. So the question and, is, uh, you know, can we help it? Uh, how can we help collisions to be created? Yeah. You have to provoke, to, to be provocative. Uh, and uh, it's one of my specialization, uh, provocative therapy. Uh, I work with uh, some Farrelly, guy, Farrelly, we are yes, talking about uh, Farrelly one of, like a clone. And uh, uh, the, the therapist have an unexpected behavior. Uh, uh, and uh, some silly or cra crazy behavior, um, looking crazy, but not crazy, <laughs> very um, uh, strategic. Like, for example? Oh, uh, I w when, I was, when I was young, I could uh, fall off my chair. Between, and uh, uh, usually I still do that with, uh, only with evocation. Uh, if um, maybe in the five minutes I will fall dead uh, with you. So with an anxious person, you provoke the worst thing that can happen for them in Some front of, of them. Kind, yes. If I can speak about my own experience of script development or script consultancy, it's not something that I, I think about consciously, but when you have someone who is shy about his own ideas, and you feel there is a great sensitivity here, but he is all about structure, for example, and technique, and he's, he's going, or she is going too quickly into technique, and, and, be, and but you can feel there is something else and so, something more original. If you play, I don't know, the clown or someone would say, oh, oh yeah, do, do the stupid thing, do the structure, block yourself and see, and then, if the person is sensitive enough, she will react, she will say, yeah. no, that's not what I want to do. So you have to provoke a reaction, you know, it's a little bit like what, what you're saying. You have to, if, the, if the, the creative mind is allied, the person will react to the fact that you try to lock her into something which is very cliche in a way. Just to um, say something about, you know, this habit of the brain uh, uh, to... Um, uh, to use, you know, knowledge and um, there, there, there is a sort of uh, control, uh, of attentional control. It's, the, you know, we have a resource, we can pay attention to different things and you talked about driving when you, you became expert in driving. Even if the task is complex, we do it, you know, without a lot of attention. Uh, while we are starting to drive, we are, you know, we don't want to listen to music or talk to anyone, you know, we are focusing. Uh, uh, so we use all our resource on the task. And, and I, uh, in my opinion, the brain is, uh, has... Um, uh, an aim 
is to lead to automatic thinking uh, as much as possible to save resources for something unexpected, for something more interesting. And so all the, the behaviors that can be automated, it will be. Uh, and the, and uh, the things that uh, in creativity we need to do is to uh, uh, reduce this control, attentional control. And things that like, for example, working while uh, creating, uh, doing uh, secondary task while we are doing uh, primary task, all these things, you know, try to, to remove a little bit of control. Uh, so something that distracts you but not too much, because if you are too distracted, you cannot focus on your main task. So, for example, walking, it's not very distracted, but it's, uh, it's removed a little bit of uh, control on your uh, thinking. And, uh, and because there is this duality in, in the processes of creating, we need to have the freedom to think about options. So there is in the brain a, a network uh, we can talk about it later, the default network, who leads to this exploration of the memories and you, you, you said the, the five senses and the information that are linked. For example, if you think about uh, uh, the last time you went to Brest or uh, I, I don't know, so there, there are sounds linked to this image, there are smells, there are... Uh, so this is what you explore, in fact, and these things are stored in the memory and... Uh, uh, so. Uh, this, um, this, the access to this uh, imagery, to this uh, part of the brain network, uh, <clears throat> you cannot have it if you are focusing on something uh, visual or something that is uh, involving your, uh, from the environment, something that's involved your response. So to be able to access uh, it's like, you know, they are uh, negatively correlated. You know, the control uh, block the imagination or block the default mode, uh, mode of, of the brain. But if you are thinking about uh, something creative, this is the magic. Uh, it's uh, uh, about the attentional control and the, the default mode. So they work together. But uh, uh, in fact, the attention that is directed to this, uh, this uh, glass uh, will be directed internally. So in fact, the control is, uh, of attention came from outside to inside. So y your attention, your control system that's, that work in the brain, that control attention, direct attention to object or to task, or, will direct attention to internal thoughts and, uh, and lead to the, to the exploration of the imagination. Uh, and this is what, could, what happened when you are trying to be creative. So it's sort of balance, and again, we, we talk about a balance between control and uh, uh, free imagination. What this control of attention internally does, it's help you, you know, to check uh, the ideas. Before you know you, uh, you, you, you can come up with an idea, it check the ideas, it uh, um, uh, help you to, to, to go further in the network of uh, your semantic memory, because you know the concepts are linked and uh, yeah, you, you, you know all this. What, so is, it's, what is semantic memory? It's about concepts, it's all the concepts we, we have learned that are uh, blocked. It's not, it has nothing to do with emotions. It's like, for example, uh, uh, light is white, or uh, uh, the sky... Uh, is blue? You know, <laughs> uh, nearly, Can nearly. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, knowledge about uh, things in, in life. It, it has nothing to do with, uh, for example, episodic memory, which is about our past. Uh, our uh, emotions, things we have, uh, we know. So when you are, uh, in, in fact, what you say is exactly what is seen in, in neuroscience. If you, you said you shut your uh, eyes to have access to this, in fact, you, you block the visual uh, the interference. Uh, visual interference Thank you. This is the right word. Uh, the, the interference, the visual interference. And in one study, they asked the, uh, the participants to keep their eyes open. Uh, 
and to fix uh, a cross on the screen, in the middle of the screen. So they couldn't uh, shut their eyes to, to, to have access to this uh, part of the brain that, uh, that is linked to memory, emotions. And, uh, so what the brain uh, did is uh, to uh, um, switch off, you know, uh, even if you look at, at the brain direct the attention instead of looking at the cross, you, the attention was um, um, directed internally. And this you, ca you can see it, you know, with the scanning the brain while you are doing this kind of task. Uh, so it's about then, one of the... Then I didn't get, looking at that cross, did it help mm. enhance? In, in fact, whenever someone asks you a question and you don't have the answer or it's complicated, you look away from the, the person who asked the question or you shut, even you shut your eyes. This is something that is, um, it means your brain is trying to avoid distraction to get access to the information needed to answer the question. Uh, you see what I mean? Um, you need to go into another space in order to get what you look for. To, to, because, you know, uh, if, for example, I ask you a difficult question, you may close your eyes, you may look, uh, you, you, you just avoid distraction, you know? You, uh, you shut down the visual or the sensory gates, you, you, you shut them down, to get access to the information needed. And, uh, and this, the insight, the, the moment where the idea uh, will come up, just before it comes to consciousness, and it's a really fascinating study, uh, before the, the insights, before the idea came out, uh, there is this uh, uh, burst in alpha uh, a band, uh, you know, the, the, the alpha. So it's something that, uh, uh, that is linked <coughs> to retrieval of, uh, of the, um, uh, the response, of the insight. So it's like, you know, the brain uh, has his own uh, uh, chemistry and his own balance. And the, the most important thing, for, in my opinion, because it's still, you know, every, every year, every day, we have new uh, finding, but attention is very important. And when you close your eyes, you keep uh, the disturbance, the visual disturbance and, uh, and stuff. Yeah. No, my, I, I ask to keep, I mean, to close the eyes and also to have the earring like that. I mean, normally we, I put the headphones, with the data phone, you know, and is completely out of the sound, the standard sound and uh, visually. Mm -hmm. So he can close and can in, in immerse himself in this space. So I close also as well. Into the, themselves, meaning yeah. the place Meaning they this place, this place is really a place. So it's about cutting every possible I mean, not every intrusion. possible, not every possible, but the sound and the images, I mean, when you sit, because you don't touch, you're not moving, you're not smelling, in a quite neutral place, uh, the hearing and the visual are the most, the senses more excited. I mean, because you see things, you hear things. So if you close eyes and you put your ears, I mean, a, a little bit in a phase of stop, you can hear the real sound of this space and see real images of this space, meaning the space that we go together to explore with your character or with your situation, which seems to you problematic, because we do it also for special things. I mean, for the problem at in your script, you know, and we try to explore it through that space. What you said uh, about provocative and provocative, uh, well, not writing, but which means that you need somebody else. And me, my question is that many people, when they write, most of the time they're alone in the coffee shop, maybe with somebody around or um, uh, looking for movement from the outside to use it to shut off in a weird way. But about the provocative thing, this is something I experienced uh, co-writing with someone on a very tragic story, a personal tragedy. And uh, this is funny because um, being a clown with your own tragic stuff 
gives it movement because w when there's tragedy it's very stiff no? so um, maybe a way to give movement is to to look at your own work um, with uh, an opposite genre if you work on a tragedy try to be a clown with your work and if you write a comedy try to be tragic no? uh, to find new ideas and uh, this is very fruitful what happens very often if not all the time for co-writers when two people are in the same room co-writing the same script which I often advise very strongly to write to authors to you know co-write uh, it, when something is blocking, one of the two stands up, you know, uh, going around in the room, and then as soon, when you've been blocking for an hour or two hours, and nothing comes, and it doesn't work, we don't find, no, no, no. You stand up, you start to investigate without really wanting to investigate, but if you stand up and if you walk, you, you, you in, immerse yourself into a, a different perspective in that same room. And the sim simple fact of moving creates, unlocks. Let's know. do it. Yeah. <laughs>